Well, topping our news at this hour, Powell Boulevard is open again at I-205 after a driver hit and killed a pedestrian. This happened just after midnight. The driver remained on the scene and is apparently cooperating with investigators. We don't yet know the name of the victim, but we'll bring you updates as they become available. The family of a man shot and killed by police is demanding answers from officers. 36-year-old Andre Gladden died in January. A grand jury has cleared the officer who killed him of any wrongdoing. Gladden's family and supporters gathered in Northeast Portland yesterday. And as KGW's Art Edwards reports, they won't stop fighting for answers. First name. Andre. Last name. Larry. The gathering for Andre Gladden went to the streets of North Portland people marching in the middle of Killingsworth. They stopped at the intersection of Killingsworth and MLK Boulevard to try to get the message across. The marchers eventually made their way to the North Precinct as officers looked on. Gladden was shot and killed by a Portland police officer in January. According to police, he showed up at a stranger's house in Southeast Portland, pulled a knife and cornered officer Consider Vosu. Police say the officer tried using a taser before shooting Gladden three times. A grand jury cleared Officer Vosu of any wrongdoing. This old photo doesn't show it, but Gladden lost an eye after an old gunshot wound to the head and was legally blind. He could only see shadows and shapes according to his family. They say that he would never pull a knife. He loved to make people happy. He loved to put a smile on people's face. And he's not confrontational, and he's not confrontational at all. Now they're looking for answers. There's an echo in these streets. There's a cry in these streets. And if they're not going to be peaceful and, peace, uh, and be a peace officer, they need to throw down their badges and go home. That was Art Edwards reporting. Now Gladden's family says they will continue to try to draw attention to the shooting until they get the answers they're looking for. Well, here's where two stories collide. One of the people at that vigil march uh, was arrested after police say he stole the portrait of a disgraced former mayor from City Hall. This guy right here. Let's take that off the wall. Let's go ahead and take this outside. Jeffrey Black live streamed both last month's theft and his arrest this morning on Facebook. Last night, he also posted a video of the portrait of Mayor Neil Goldschmidt on fire. We caught up with Black at the vigil, who said he did this in support of sex abuse victims and those who are shot by police. We burned the photo of Neil Goldschmidt uh, in honor of both his victims and the victims of City Hall, including police murder victims, because uh, the killing must stop. And, and this is a, a deliberate act of civil disobedience to send a message. Goldschmidt was mayor in the 70s and later became governor. In 2004, he admitted to raping a 13-year-old while mayor, but did not face charges because the statute of limitations was up. Now to a bizarre and tragic story out of Southern Oregon. A man known for being a former Mouseketeer went missing. When police searched his home near Medford, they found a body and that's all we know so far. They're not saying yet whether it is the body of 76 year old Dennis Day. Back in the mid 50s, he was a cast member on the Mickey Mouse Club. Day's disappearance went largely unnoticed for months. Family reportedly just recently got involved, starting a Facebook page called Help Us Find Dennis Day. That's where they posted these images. Local and state police, along with forensic investigators, were on scene Thursday, and we'll bring you updates as we get them. An Oregon Department of Corrections officer is accusing his supervisor of shocking him with a taser. He claims it's part of a culture of violence and hazing within the DOC. According to our news partners at the Statesman Journal, Michael Kilgus filed a tort claim against the department. He says the tasing took place when he was training at Coffee Creek Correctional Facility in Wilsonville. Now, the Department of Corrections sent us this statement saying the supervising officer has been fired. They also say they don't tolerate hazing and staff safety is their priority. Well, this mo motorhome fire just north of Kaiser snarled up traffic on I-5 yesterday. Crews say a blown tire caused it to break out. Firefighters responded just after 5 p.m. As you can see, the motorhome was fully involved with flames. Everyone was able to get out safely, but the motorhome itself is a total loss. 
take a look at the damage to this Portland police car. Officers say an impaired driver crashed into the patrol car with an officer inside. That's right, early Saturday morning, two officers were investigating a report of a suspicious person in Northeast Portland near 79th Avenue and Sandy Boulevard. Police say a car with no headlights rear-ended one of their patrol cars. The officer was not seriously hurt. Jeremy Heisler, seen there, was arrested and taken to the hospital for minor injuries. We've earned the right to be here, and um, I mean, next year, just come out and, and do even more now that we got a taste of this. Turning to sports now, there is relief this morning among Ducks fans after Sabrina Inescu announced she will be back at Oregon to play next year. The 21-year-old point guard is foregoing an all but certain number one slot in the WNBA. She says it's because there's something special happening in Eugene. KGW's Maggie Vespa explains. She gets free. Hit by Richards and a chance at a four-point play. Trumpeted as the point guard who led the Ducks to their first ever Final Four and the player who turned Oregon women's basketball into a consistent Pac-12 contender. It's going to go down as one of the best seasons in, in history. Sabrina Ionescu says she just can't leave Eugene yet. In her letter to Ducks Nation, Ionescu writes, I bet from the outside looking in when people see me and they see this season we've had as a team and this season I've had as a player, you know, they probably think she's got to go pro. But recounting the success of the last three years, including two trips to the Elite Eight and last night's Final Four matchup, the California native countered, writing, yes, this has been an incredible journey, but no, this is not as good as it gets. I couldn't be happier to announce that I'm coming back to the University of Oregon for the 2019-2020 basketball season. She continued, we're building a program and not just any program. We're building a program that wins national championships, starting, I hope, with this next one. The move comes as excitement surrounding UNESCO's future reaches a fever pitch. Earlier this week, NBA superstar Steph Curry gave her a shout out. She's, she's a, she's a le legend in her own right, for sure. But tonight, KGW sports analyst John Canzano says it's clear she's invested in Oregon's future. Well, I thought yesterday as they left the building that she, she didn't look like a player who was done with college. And what I mean by that is she wasn't off walking with her own people. She was walking with her teammates. Uh, they were all engaged with each other. And, you know, I, it, it occurred to me at the time that they still very much look like a team. He added the WNBA's salary range is nowhere near that of its male counterpart. One more year in Oregon spotlight could only grow her brand. I would expect if you are Nike, if you are Adidas, if you're Under Armour, that the asking price for Sabrina Ionescu is going to go through the roof. I think her brand is going to be big. I mean, I think Serena Williams big. That's how big she can be. And that was Maggie Vespa reporting there. And you can read Ionescu's full letter to Ducks Nation at KGW.com. Well, staying with sports, attorney Michael Evanati is making more claims against Nike, saying the company made bribes to college basketball players. He says this includes former Oregon Duck Bull Bull. He tweeted out documents that he says show evidence. Avenatti has been charged with trying to extort $20 million from Nike. Prosecutors say he threatened to release damaging information about the company if they didn't pay him. Nike has released a statement saying it won't respond to someone facing fraud and extortion charges and who is trying to distract from March Madness. The company says it will continue working with investigators.